Number 25. Complete and balance the equations for the following acid-base neutralization reactions. If water is used as a solvent, write the reactants and products as aqueous ions, and in some cases there might be more than one correct answer, depending on the amount of reactants used. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> we just have to finish this equation, right? We have to find out what happens when SO3 gas reacts with H2O liquid. Now, they gave us a, a little tip here. They said, assume an excess amount of water and that the product dissolves. Okay, so whatever product we're going to make, it, it's going to dissociate or it's going to dissolve, right? When something dissolves or when something dissociates, it's going to be in aqueous form. So hopefully whatever we make, right, follows the solubility rules of being aqueous. That's like a little check. But let's give it a try. So SO3 gas is reacting with water. Okay. Now they say up here that this is a acid base neutralization reaction. Um, I guess we could kind of think of it that way. However, when you have sulfur trioxide mixing with water, I like to think of it as a, a different way. What I like to do is I like to treat this equation as a formation equation or a combination equation. Okay. So instead of trying to find out who's the acid and who's the base and, and say, okay, hydrogens, right? The acid gives the hydrogen to the base. The acid gives the hydrogen to the base. The base accepts it. What we're going to do is we're going to combine these two compounds together into one big compound. Now, this is a very special case. In normal terms, you are going to be finding the ions, just like we've been doing, right? However, the key that I know that this is a different, uh, this is a different way is that SO3 is a gas. Usually when you start off with gases and liquids and no aqueous guys, you are not breaking it down into its ions. You got to combine them. So that was my little, like, I saw that and I said, okay, I got to form, I got to combine. So let's just tally everything up. Well, I have one S, right, on my reactant side. So I'm just going to tally that up. So I got an S. Let's see. I have how many oxygens? Well, I have three here plus one oxygen. So that's a total of four oxygens. And since it's one whole compound, I will say O4. Oh, th this is interesting. We know what SO4 is, right? SO4 is one of your polyatomics. Hmm. So it, it looks like we're on the right track here, right? SO4 is sulfate. Now let's see. I have two hydrogens. So that's going to be added to the compound. And if I put it over here, uh, that looks a little weird, right? But hydrogens, right, usually stand for acids. In this case, it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the front. H2SO4. And maybe I should have wrote this in red because what is H2SO4, guys? H2SO4 is one of our strong acids. There's only six of them, right? So H2SO4 is a strong acid. And H2SO4, any strong acid, is going to dissociate. It's going to dissolve. So in this case, it makes sense that we made a aqueous product, right? H2SO4, a strong acid, is going to break down into its ions. So we did the first part, right? But now they're saying that uh, we are assuming an excess of water, okay, and that the product dissolves. They also told us that if water was used as a solvent, write the reactants and the products as aqueous ions. So let's just do that, right? Now I can't touch my sulfur trioxide because that's the gas. I can't touch the water because that's a liquid. Remember, liquid and gases do not uh, dissociate. They don't break down. However, 
since uh, we have H2SO4 and it was aqueous, I will break this down. So now we treat this as a normal, just a, a normal compound in which it has two ions. We need to find the split. Remember what we said before, right? Sulfate, SO4, is a ion, right? It's an anion. So my break would be the sulfates are together and my hydrogen is lonely. And that kind of makes sense, right? With acids, you will always break it apart with your hydrogen and then your uh, negative charge, your anion. So use those subscripts, right? There were two hydrogens, but now how many sulfates were there? Were there four sulfates? No, no. The four is part of the polyatomic. So if I just put like a parenthesis here, how many sulfates do I now have? There was no number here. So that means that I had one of them. And use those subscripts to crisscross back up. This two breaks up into a negative two, right? And this one breaks up into a plus one. So my total, um, my total ions are H plus one and an SO4 two minus. Okay, perfect. Now let's just try to balance the um, amount that I have, right? I had two hydrogens here. So technically I would have to put a two in front of my H plus, right? And I only have one sulfate, so that would be an SO4, two minus, just one of them. And that could replace my strong acid. This is what the ions were when you broke them down. So maybe instead of saying H2SO4, what I might say is, let's erase this, right? And S uh, H2SO4 was just an H+, plus, which was aqueous plus an SO4, two minus, which was aqueous. And since I had two hydrogens, I had to write a two here. Now this breakdown is assuming that all of the H2SO4 broke down. However, maybe only one hydrogen broke down, right? So I think this one is that some case example in which there may be one, more than one correct answer. So let's just write the other one. So I have SO3, which is a gas, plus H2O, liquid, and we have H2SO4, okay, and that was aqueous. So this would be the answer if both hydrogens broke down. But now what would happen if only one hydrogen dissociated from the uh, H2SO4, from the strong acid. Well, let's see. If that was the case, if you only had one H, so let's write it like this. If I only had one H that broke down, the other H, since there's two of them, has to be with the other ion. So what would be my other ion? It would just be H. SO4. Now what would be the charge? If that one hydrogen, right, is sticking with my sulfate, and H is a plus one charge, and the sulfate is a minus two, these are coming together, plus one minus two is now a negative one total charge. So this compound would be a negative one charge, and that would be what would be replaced here. This would be like a one-step dissociation. This would be like a two-step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe get rid of this, right? And just rewrite it as the one-stepper. So we have H+, plus, and that's aqueous because it broke down. And then H, SO4, minus one, and that's aqueous. And in this case, we don't have to put any... Um, coefficients because H2SO4. So we don't have to balance this. It's already balanced. So these are possibly your two answers. Okay, so this one is the complete breakdown of H2SO4. 
and this one was if I just broke off the one hydrogen from H2SO4. Technically, this would happen first before this one, if that makes sense, right? You have to break off one hydrogen first and then break off the other hydrogen. So this reaction would happen first, and then this would be like the overall reaction if both hydrogens dissociated. But they all would equal, and maybe I'll just put this as the, the beginning one. It all stemmed from making H2SO4, and that was aqueous. Okay, so there you go. Guys, hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments if it did. Um, and yeah, I hope I'm helping you out with your chem classes. And if you have other questions and other subjects, we have math questions. We got physics questions. So you could check out our channel for more concepts, okay? But either way, I'll see you in the next lesson. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.